Welcome back everyone. This is an old video of something I just found on my hard drive. This is lead acetate, this is lead acetate and I decided to finally publish it. Even after these have not dried, even after an entire year. They are still wet with acetic acid and I don't seem to be able to dry them so I'll just use them in a future run for something else for which the lead acetate does not have to be dry and you can just enjoy the video. While bubbling air through any solution of soluble lead, it is important that you have some sort of filter or hose leading outside because some water soluble lead salts will always become airborne and you don't want to contaminate your entire area and you don't want to inhale them. So use a syringe plugged with some cotton or a hose leading outside. Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make some lead acetate from easy to obtain materials. Keep in mind that lead salts are toxic and should definitely not be messed with. I have a huge respect for water soluble lead salts. For this preparation lead metal, 50 to 80% acetic acid and air are needed. I used glacial acetic acid and distilled water to make my dilute acetic acid. We are going to build a makeshift gas washing bottle for our reaction flask. A lot of chunks of lead metal were added to the glass bottle. Afterwards, distilled water and glacial acetic acid were added. Normally only lab grade glass should be used for experiments, but I didn't want to contaminate my gas bubbler with any sort of soluble lead compound and therefore we decided to go this route. A glass tube going through the lid of the bottle was placed into the lead metal. We made sure that it reached all the way to the bottom of the bottle. The bottle was brought back inside and connected to an aquarium air pump. The lead metal wouldn't react with the acetic acid all by itself, but by bubbling oxygen through the lead, the lead will first be oxidized to lead 2 oxide. The lead 2 oxide will afterwards react with acetic acid water-soluble lead to acetate is formed. This process takes a long time, but it works. A laboratory-grade gas washing bottle like this could of course also be used as the reaction flask. The next morning the pipe here actually started to clog up. So what I did was I disconnected the pump and I connected a syringe to that tube. After the syringe was connected, we simply pushed back air and sucked some acetic acid through the tube until it was clean. And afterwards it was perfectly cleaned up and air could go through again. Later on more dilute acetic acid was added and the bottle was tilted to increase the surface area of the bubbles bubbling through the lead. This inevitably speeds up the reaction. A few days later, the lead acetate looked like this. A few crystals have already settled on the top of the makeshift gas bubbler and you can see that a little lead has dissolved. You probably aren't able to see it, but it has. And while filming, even some crystals had started to form and I decided to add more water and acetic acid. And now it's time to take out all of the solution, boil it down and let it crystallize. Syringe was used to suck out the lead acetate solution from the bottle. This was followed by squirting all of the lead acetate solution into a beaker. Make sure to always wear gloves and to be really careful when handling lead acetate because it is toxic and you don't want it to get spilled on your skin. You can see that there's still a lot of lead in there and in theory you could just add in more acetic acid and distilled water if you wanted to produce even more lead acetate. The beaker was taken outside and most of the acetic acid distilled water was boiled off. A distillation apparatus could also be used to recover the acetic acid. Desiccator box, a really crude desiccator box was prepared. We have two times calcium chloride and sodium hydroxide in these glasses to absorb all of the acetic acid which remains in the solution. The lead acetate solution will go straight into these both crystallization dishes. And here you go. 
go. Let's slowly put that in here. Just half of it, not everything. Yeah, and the other half goes in here. We will rinse out the beaker with some distilled water and pour it in here too to get the maximum yield. The crystallization dishes were then put into the desiccator box and the desiccator box is closed until we had some nice crystals that formed. Yes, and that's it after an entire year, have it dried. It might be better if you use 25% acetic acid instead of a higher concentration because with 25% acetic acid I always got nice crystals and I didn't get that acetate that's right on the top and prevented the acetic acid below from evaporating. If you liked today's video make sure to drop me one of these and consider subscribing to my channel for more LED chemistry and other awesome stuff in the future. Bye.